Hi, this is Muhammad Barakat. In a previous video, I presented the prioritization matrix as one of the seven management and planning tools. And in this video, I'll present another important tool called the interrelationship graph or relations diagram. This diagram helps us analyze the cause and effect links between different issues or ideas in a complex situation. Usually this tool is used after generating and grouping ideas about a situation using what's called as the affinity diagram. Here is a diagram showing the seven management and planning tools that are used in Six Sigma and quality management in general, which are the prioritization matrix, the affinity diagram, tree diagram, matrix diagram, the interrelationship graph, activity network diagram, and the process decision program chart. Well, let me first throw some light on the main uses of the interrelationship graph. This graph is basically used to identify complex cause and effect relationships among several issues or ideas. So there are s several expected causes and effects in the situation under study. It is also used to focus on issues with highest priorities, whether having a cause nature or an effect nature. Actually, the beauty of this tool is in its ability to help us identify the vital few issues that drive significant progress in the situation we are studying, which reminds us actually of Pareto principle or the 80-20 rule. On the other hand, it helps us identify key performance indicators that measure our success in, sol in solving the problem under study, as we'll see later in this video. Interrelationship the graph is usually represented in the form of issues or ideas relevant to the situation under study, connected with one-headed arrows pointing from causes or drivers towards effects or outcomes. So in this diagram, issue 3 is a cause of issue 1. Or we can say that issue 3 influences or drives issue 1. With this diagram we end up with each issue having a count of arrows in and arrows out. The ones with the highest number of out arrows are thought of as being significant drivers or causes. In this diagram it is, um, for example, issue 4, which is the significant driver. Whereas the ones with the highest number of N arrows can be considered as significant outcomes or effects, which is issue 1 here. Well. Interrelationship the graph is actually constructed with input from all stakeholders involved in the problem statement as it requires a great deal of intuition and experience in the subject matter. It is actually a good team integration tool as it helps surface positive conflicts and personal viewpoints from team members which in turn help better resolve the problem under study. When you construct the interrelationship the graph, you take issues or ideas in pairs and ask the team, is there a relationship between these two issues? Then ask the second question, if yes, which one influences the other? If team agrees on a relationship, draw one head headed arrow from the cause issue to the effect issue. Try to place issues in a particular form and move clockwise in investigating each pair of issue. At the end, count arrows in and, and arrows out for each issue and decide on significant drivers and outcomes. I'd like to mention that it is a common practice when constructing this diagram to write issues or ideas on cards on s or sticky notes placed at some work surface, then drawing arrows among them. Well, to save time, you can use Microsoft Office Visio actually instead, 
and you can even dock it to uh, some data shows device to be visible to all team members as they interact with the tool. This is Microsoft Office Visio. I'll use a general template and select basic diagram create from design tab change it to landscape view ok let's analyze a hypothetical situation of a company that envisions itself as number one in the region by the year 2015 and it wants to know what ideas or issues are critical to achieve this vision so, in this Visio page, we write the main issue statement at the top. So, let's say that our mm, vision statement is what makes us number one in the region by 2015. okay now the team starts throwing whatever ideas that may help to achieve the vision and after brainstorming all ideas the team agreed to have customer satisfaction let's write it here in a circle so customer satisfaction as one contributor issue to the vision okay and they have this let's say supplier partnership as another issue we can copy the same circle to keep the formatting and size of the circle so we have supplier partnership as another issue and we can have um, a third issue let's say it is uh, um, efficient and lean processes At the end of the brainstorming session, the team agreed to have eight ideas, each of which is written inside a circle, as you can see here. So, the next step is to figure out the cause and effect relationships among all ideas. So, we take ideas in pairs and ask two questions. Are these two ideas related? And if yes, which one influences or drives the other? Let's start um, at the top and move clockwise till we finish all ideas. So we'll take efficient and lean processes with leadership as the first pair. Are they related? Well, I guess yes. Which one influences the other? I'd say that leadership would drive efficient and lean processes. If the team agrees on that, an arrow is drawn from leadership towards efficient and lean processes. So we can draw arrows using Visio through connector from leadership towards efficient and lean processes. Then we take efficient and lean processes with training. Again, I would say that training is a cause leading to lean uh, processes. So an arrow is drawn from training to efficient and lean processes. And so on. 
until the team finds all possible relationships among ideas and draws arrows representing these relationships. The next step in constructing the interrelationship diagram is to pinpoint the significant drivers and outcomes. This is actually done by counting how many arrows out and in each idea. So the efficient and lean processes has three arrows in and two arrows out. We can use the text tool to write the result beside the idea. So in Visio we use the text tool and we write here beside the efficient and lean processes um, N three out two. Okay. For leadership, there are one, two, three, four, five arrows out and no arrows in, which makes the leadership idea a potential significant driver to our vision. So we write also here the count of arrows. N zero out five. We continue the counting process for all ideas and finally we highlight the idea with the highest number of out arrows as driver and the one with the highest number of in arrows as outcome. You can use coloring or specific shapes to highlight significant drivers and outcomes. Here the result shows that leadership is actually a significant driver. So we can color it with let's say brown while customer satisfaction with six arrows in is a significant outcome. So we can color it in, let's say, uh, blue. Okay, by this the interrelationship the graph is actually complete. But how can we use this result to achieve our vision? Practically, the result tells us that since leadership drives m most of the areas, we have to focus our efforts on leadership development so that we can achieve significant progress in achieving the overall statement of the vision. Meanwhile, since customer satisfaction is the outcome of most of areas involved, it will be an excellent key performance indicator or measure to monitor our progress in achieving the vision.